Welcome to the final GFN of 2020. I'm Morgan Mackenzie Moore, and let's take a look at the headlines. For the end of year special, we wanted to use this time to take a quick look back on the gluten free headlines of the year. In January, Gatron Co launched their gluten free cookie range, and Celiac UK pushed back against government plans to scrap the gluten free prescription in England. In February, a gluten intolerant student at Maryland University sued her university after cafeteria staff served her regular toast. And in other extremely important gluten free news in February, Kourtney Kardashian has allegedly given up on her gluten free diet. And then in March, because of panic buying, regular people started eating our pasta. In April, thankfully, Doves Free From Farm and Morrison's released the Gluten Free Essentials box, which contained flour, pasta, cereals, and much more which was well received by the celiacs across the country whose supermarket shelves were empty. In May, Sainsbury's, Tesco's, Morrison's and Asda issued urgent recalls on the low-dough gluten-free Miracle Cake Bars, which actually contained gluten. <laughs> June saw the markets predict that the global gluten-free product market is expected to reach 9.98 billion US by 2027. In July, Poundland announced its brand new free-from ranges in store. However, I'm yet to find a Poundland that has actually implemented this. August brought the release of the Galaxy Gluten-Free Chocolate Cake and we were finally able to have a regular sized chocolate cake in supermarkets. In September, a UK restaurant owner mocked a celiac for a gluten-free food request and poor TripAdvisor review. Let's just say he learnt that it was a bad idea to mess with the gluten-free community. In October, Asda announced that it was cutting the cost of its free-from products so that they are more accessible for the consumer. Everybody liked that. In November, gluten-free Oreos happened. And finally, ending the year on a tiny minuscule positive, the best chocolate in the world has finally appeared on UK shores. Yes, that's right, I'm talking about Cadbury Caramilk. In early December, it's made its way from New Zealand and Australia to B&M stores across the country. Reports are that it's a better gluten-free version of Caramac. I have no idea what Caramac is, but this is a fantastic chocolate. Now, let's head over to Morgan for what looks like to be a dramatic revelation in the UK-wide gluten-free digestive biscuit conspiracy. Let's go to her now. Last month, I broke open one of the biggest gluten-free digestive biscuit stories of the decade. And today, I'm here to tell you, I've only just scratched the surface. That's right, it gets deeper. It was here at my local co-op, standing in the free-from aisle, looking at the chocolate digestive biscuits when my mind suddenly expanded to the possibilities of other supermarket chains being involved in this conspiracy. Looking at the packet, it dawned on me that Digestive Gate didn't end at the plain digestives. I quickly returned to Sainsbury's and Tesco's to gather the evidence I needed, and it was damning. Here you can see the three types of biscuits in relatively different packaging. But what you need to know is that the co-op gluten-free digestive costs £1.50, whereas the Sainsbury and Tesco biscuit costs only £1.30. I bet you're wishing it ended there, but alas, Asda also sells a gluten-free chocolate digestive biscuit, but only at a pound a packet. And guess what? They're all exactly the same. It makes you wonder. Are we gluten-free people destined into being fooled that we have choice and variety when it comes to our food shopping when really it's just being repackaged? Or do the shared products have a positive effect in keeping the prices down for us? Next month I'll take a deeper dive into Digestive Gate and you'll be surprised at what other double ups I have found. I'm Morgan Thoreau and this was Biscuit Watch. What an odd story. Morgan will be back for Biscuit Watch in 2021. Anyway, let's head to the weather. Morgan, how's the weather looking for the New Year's? Cold. Just cold. What does it matter? We're staying inside anyway. Right. Fair enough. As we wrap up here for 2020, I just want to say that this year has largely been a show. There's no nice way to put it. A total f***ing of a year. People's lives have been turned upside down. Because of the pandemic, jobs have been lost, including my own. Businesses have had to permanently close. Families have lost loved ones or been separated and isolated from one another. Many governments have completely failed at controlling the outbreak and millions of people are suffering with long-term health problems because of the virus. If I was to rate this year out of 10, I'd get a negative five. 
but we've also seen the kindness and resiliency of individuals and the community spirit. The focus is slowly starting to turn away from big corporations and turning towards small businesses and grassroots organisations. New hobbies have been found and working from home, while at times difficult, has given many people the chance to take a moment away from the hustle and bustle of city life. So while much of the world, including the UK, is still in the thick of it, what is this, the fourth lockdown? I'm sure we're all looking forward to leaving this year behind and saying a big hello to 2021. We're coming to the end of the final GFN for 2020. I hope you've enjoyed this news show so far and we will be continuing it on in the future. If you have any news stories you would like us to cover, please do write in. We'd love to hear from you. Otherwise, we here at GFN are wishing you a peaceful, prosperous and hopefully less pandemic -y new year. From Morgan, Morgan, myself and Link, good night.